Hello people, welcome back to Real English with Real Teachers. My name's Harry, hope you are fabby dabby do. Today we've got a grammar quiz like no other. On one team we've got my friends who are native English speakers and on the other team we have my students who are non-native speakers from Spain, Italy, Poland and Holland. We're finally going to find out if Brits are as terrible at grammar as people think we are and see if my wonderful students and you guys can beat them. This is going to be a ruddy bloody blast. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. <laughs> Should we start with some introductions? Your name, where you're from and um, what you got in English at school. Matt, who are you? On that, I'm for a bedroom. <laughs> Before we jump into the grammar showdown, I've got a couple of brief announcements that I'd like to make. Firstly, I'm going to reveal the winners of the giveaway that I did in my last video. So, well done to Pavel. Pavel? Pavel, you have won a lesson with me because you successfully listed all of my Christmas presents. You did a brilliant job. I would like to give you a lesson. And the second lesson goes to Drunk Cherry. You have won a lesson with me because you were the first person to successfully guess my favourite Christmas decorations. So well done to both of you and uh, I look forward to meeting you both. The second announcement is that the Lingoda language sprint is just around the corner, which means that you, lucky English learner, you have the opportunity to take three months of daily English lessons and then potentially get all of your money back. I will tell you the full details of the Lingo to Sprint at this point in the video, but until then, let's get going with the biggest grammar showdown that this channel has ever seen. So we've got 15 questions in total. Most of them are related to grammar, but a couple are about pronunciation and uh, word origins as well. So it's not all grammar focused, but it is mainly about grammar. Please take part at home and tell me how many you got right. I really want you to try and beat my friends here. So here's the first one. So here we have a, a list of words. So do you have to write a sentence with all the words? No, stop trying to guess. Listen to the <laughs> quiz master. And I want you to write down on what syllable does the stress fall? For each of these words, on what syllable does the stress lie? Not sure I've ever heard of that as a thing before. Stress, I've got a clue what you're talking about. Um, so the, yeah, the stressed syllable, where the emphasis is in the word. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, that, was, yeah. that was my logic, that's what I've gone for. You're a very logical man. So when it comes to syllabic stress, we don't really have any set rules. So this is a really difficult one for non-native speakers, but I think quite intuitive for native speakers. Let's see how everyone did. Okay, so I'm going to tell you straight away, you're all wrong. I think any of them right. No, 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 no. Yeah. You've got some of them right, so I'll go okay. through them. But you only get one point if you get, it, get them all right. Fuck so, it. Unfortunately, right. none of you get a point on this one. Unlucky. So the first one, arrange. The, the stress on the second syllable. Yeah, arrange. 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 Next one, around. Right on same, same again. Second yeah, syllable. I nearly did that. And then I thought D was a bit more aggressive. Next one, terrible. Stress on t the first first syllable. Ah, oh, shit. Terrible. Same, same for tyranny, first first syllable. Oh, got Par on. Paraplegic is third syllable. Yes. And paragraph is the first syllable. But well <laughs> done, Manu, Eva, and uh, the boys. Zenya, none of my friends got this either, so don't worry about it. And they're supposed to be English. Number two. Here is a sentence. Ashley, could you read this one out? I have never been so impressed in all my life. Okay, so without consulting Google, please write down what tense this is in. If it's the past, the present. Uh... Yeah, so if I said yesterday I was walking the dog, that would be the past continuous tense. So I want you to do the same thing for this sentence. No Googling, please. Oh, Can you have right the on. options of different tenses? You've got five seconds, guys, and I want to see these answers. Five, four, three, two, one. Past, present, past. Okay, so the closest one is Matt. It is called the present, but it's the present perfect. So I can't give any. I can't give any right answers. Here. What? Ah, oh, that's quite harsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, no, because the present that would suggest like present simple. I am called Harry. Or no, that I said, I said they're 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 there and then at the time saying I've never been so impressed in all my life. Otherwise it would have been. Otherwise it would have been. Otherwise it would have been. I had never been so impressed. No, but but it's the present perfect because it's seated action from the past that relates to the present. I didn't even know there was a. Th I didn't even know what present perfect was. I just thought it was past or present to be honest. Ever well done. Ever got that one right? It's the present perfect. Question three. This one is a true or false question. So just tell me, is it true, is it false? Okay, this one's about the origin of the word shit. Oh. Now, the, the word shit was originally an acronym for ship high in transit. A label used on shipments of manure, horse poop, or is it cow poop, to prevent them from becoming waterlogged and releasing explosive methane gas. So they had to stock them up high. So they put on the side of these shipments, store high in transit. That's where shit comes from. <laughs> is that true or false? <laughs> well, I'm ready to go. Oh God. What era are you you talking from, Harry? Give me give me a year. I don't know exactly the year. <laughs> 1996. Uh, 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 twentieth uh, century, maybe. Oh, nice and vague. That's quite Go a on. shit century. <laughs> okay, so it is false. Oh, oh yes. no. Rah, are you kidding me? No, no, no. I don't agree. I don't agree because I've heard this story from you, actually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In case you're wondering, the word shit is actually an old English word of German origin. I think the word was originally pronounced something like shitter, but I'm not totally sure. But it's a hilarious lie. Yeah, it's really good because it's so yeah. specific. Let me think, is he leading us? Is a double bluff? Is he saying this because yeah, it's actually going to be false? But obviously, yeah, I fell for it. Question four. In standard Southern British English, short and court contain the same vowel sound. So short and court contain the same vowel sound. Is that true or false? Oh, is it a difference if one is short and the other one is uh, long? I'm not answering any questions. You just got to tell me true or false. Let's do it. True, true, true. Oh, oh, true, true, false. Ah, ah, Cree. Ah, ah. Ah, I thought I'd throw everyone off. Well done, Manu. Well done, Manu. No, no. Listen up. What's <laughs> Ever, you, if you didn't get it right, it's wrong. Yeah, if you were from Yorkshire and you said short, and then you were from <laughs> London, you said court. They'd sound very different. In what way, Chris? Please please do a demonstration. Oh, you met my missus, she was dead short. I was running for the train, but I just caught it in the end. Number five. The word shampoo originates from the Sanskrit word chapati. True or false? Yeah. Oh, God. In Spain, there's a sort of loaf called chapata. Ready? Okay, send them through. Send your answers, guys. So this is completely true. The word shampoo came into English during the colonial era, along with lots of other words of Indian origin. Bree got it right. Ah, oh, I too. I was losing. Well done. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Number six. Correct this sentence if there are any mistakes. Oh, surely he could have scored that. Ronaldo is pathetic. If you think it's correct, say correct. If not, then write the mistake. I, I'm ready, Harry. Yeah, so am I. Chris, you ready? Yeah. He's, yeah. I can guess you see when he's ready to see his fingers. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, the angle. Okay, so if you're ready, <laughs> then click enter. Go. Wow, well done. You guys are grammar whizzes. Xenia, you got your first point on there on the board. So, Ashley is correct. Uh, on well done, the Ashley. Group. It should be, yeah, should have scored that. I surely he should this have is a scored that. Text. The way Ashley's written that answer is appalling. No, no, because that's how you'd say it. it sh in, um, should have instead of of. That's it not should have surely have. he could have it scored. It should have have instead of of. Oh. Yeah, which is, which is what I wrote. What? And have instead of of. Guys, yeah, we're, we're not correcting the grammar of the correction. <laughs> Number seven. Manu, can you read this one out? Oof. My auntie brought, brought herself a really nice bungalow a couple of years ago and she 
She oh. don't and she don't even use it. How silly. <laughs> <laughs> is it correct? Or has it got a mistake? And what is that mistake? Let's see your dog. Oh, oh. oh, oh. It's Olivia. Yeah, so Ashley and Chris got one. I bought. Yeah. I, I... Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's so obvious. <laughs> Do English people mistake broads with boards? Mm hmm. Because they sound very similar. It's just a. Uh... Just a little R in there. Common mistake amongst native speakers, born yeah. and brought. Bungalow, bungalow still spelled wrong. <laughs> bungalow. Did you get a point for bungalow? <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're halfway through the quiz. I reckon we should take a little breather and uh, count up the scores, see how everyone's doing. So we've got Ashley, Jerome and JJ and Manu in the lead with four. They're closely followed by Eva with three points. And then we have Matt and Chris with two points and Xenia with one. So everyone's doing pretty well. I'm hoping Xenia can catch up with the boys. But yeah, this is going kind of how I wanted it to go. Before we get going with the second half of the quiz, I'd like to tell you a bit more about Lingoda and their sprint that they are offering you that will allow you to take three months of English lessons and then potentially get all of your money back afterwards. So listen up. If you didn't know already, Lingoda is an online language school where you can take lessons in English, German, French, Spanish and Business English in small groups of up to five students with native speaking teachers. It's a reputable German company who have glowing reviews on Trustpilot and Google and they are a company who are clearly passionate about learning languages. Lingoda allows you to work on the four key areas of language learning. And on their platform, you can do this in a structured, progressive way where you can clearly measure and notice your progress over time. On top of that, Lingoda allows you to choose the topics of your lessons. And this is something that I think really sets Lingoda apart from other platforms, as it allows you to turn your weaknesses in English into your strengths. So for example, if you're not confident writing emails in English and you need to get better at that, they have lessons on Lingoda about writing emails. Or if you don't feel confident using conditional sentences in English, they've got lessons on that too. Whatever you feel you are lacking with your English, you can focus on that in your lessons and get feedback from a capable professional teacher. So it's a brilliant platform for language learning. And here are the details of the next Lingoda Sprint. So the sprint starts on the 28th of April 2021 and lasts for three months. The sign up deadline is April the 16th. There are two options when it comes to the intensity of your studies. We have the super sprint and we have the sprint. The main difference between these two challenges concerns the frequency of lessons. So with the super sprint, you have to take a lesson every single day while with the sprint, you only take 15 lessons per month. With the super sprint, if you turn up to all of your lessons and complete them, you will get all of your money back at the end of the three months, while with the sprint, you will get half of your money back. The sprint is available in all of the languages that they teach on Lingoda. So that's German, French, Spanish, English, and Business English. And I have actually done this challenge before. I had a brilliant time. I gained a ton of confidence in speaking Spanish and I would definitely do it again. Sign up requires a 49 euro deposit and each plan will be paid in three monthly installments. But if you use our voucher code CHANGE59, you can save yourself 10 euros on that deposit. If you do want to take part in this amazing opportunity, I wouldn't wait around. I would sign up as soon as possible. A lot of people want to do it and the spaces are limited. Good luck to you. I hope you turn up to all of your lessons, get all your money back and gain lots of confidence with your English. All the details are in the description box. Good luck to you. Let's get back to the grammar quiz. Okay, are we ready for the next one? Yep. Shoot. Uh, Chris, could you read this one out? Please? They're a bunch of bastards. I'm not going to their pub. It's dirty in there anyway. So, write your answers in. What's the mistake if there is one? Or is it correct? I know. 
Yeah, me too. I know. I know. It's so obvious. Ah, well done. Everyone got it. That's probably the most common one I see used wrong. Yeah? Yeah. On a daily basis, it's not a work, more just in my WhatsApp group. I muted a while ago, like a mate. But yeah, they all sound exactly the same. So they're homophones, so that's why they get confused. And homophones also sounds like someone who doesn't like gay people, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. So in a way, that is a homophone in itself, sort of. Uh, almost. <laughs> I'm going to give JJJ and Xenia a point. Okay. Well done. Xenia, you very nearly caught my mates up now. Question nine. Correct the sentence, if it needs correcting. The goalie was laying down in her changing room, eating a Mars bar, and his manager said, What are you up to, you muppet? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time to list out all the mistakes in that, really, Harry. Just forget about the repetition of bar, but yeah, is it true? Is it, is, it, is it correct? Is it correct? Is it incorrect? Or, 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 or what? <laughs> or, 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, same kind of question, guys. You know, you know the drill. Yeah. Write your answers in. This one is difficult <laughs> for me. Yeah, definitely. But I'm saying it should say what are you, as opposed to just what are you up to. Yeah, yeah and you're right there. Yeah, the main issue I was going for was it should be lying down, not laying down. It's a really oh, common. I, I was confused by that one. I was about to type lying down and then. Lay is a verb that needs an object, so you lay something down. Like a goalie. You can, well, <laughs> no. You can lay a baby down to sleep or lay a brick or lay an egg or something. Or a goalie. You could lay him down. Yeah, <laughs> lay him down, but he lies down. That's what I wanted you to get at, really, Harry. Just explain that properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Manu. Is the only one to get both mistakes. You lay the table, for instance. Yeah. Very good. Lay the table. Exactly. Next one. We ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go. Uh, I'm going to read this one. It's incredibly important that he go to a hospital. His leg does not look good. Severe. <laughs> it's severely <laughs> fractured. Okay. So is this correct or is this incorrect? So you're 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 all right in what you've said. You know, none of you are wrong. But um, actually, it's correct. No, it's Although it's, it sounds weird, but this is the, called the subjunctive mood in English. Oh, um, shit. The what? With, cer with certain um, <laughs> phrases, <laughs> it, we can use this. It's important that he do something. That well, he go to... <laughs> oh, yeah. I could, yeah. Imagine my grandma Another... speak saying that. Another example, you could say, I recommended he go to a hospital. Here are some other examples using the subjunctive mood. Number 11. Uh, Matt, gonna read this one? It's important to polish one's shoes before work. Oh, God. I do it every day when my principal goes to work, or to work, to the office, actually. Uh, I'm supposed to polish his shoes before he goes. Really? Really. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. So, Matt, you are correct. It, this is, in fact, correct. Okay, so Manu and Eva, well done. Well done, guys. This, this is correct. One refers to people in general, people who wear shoes, and the apostrophe S is to indicate possession, the shoes that belong to somebody. Number 12. Either ketchup or mas mustard is fine in a sausage sandwich. I agree, I agree with this, but is it correct? This is a difficult one. Uh, wait, I'm changing mine. Yeah, I'm... I'm Umming and ahhing. Yeah, I'm unsure. Umming and ising. <laughs> I don't know if this is R, a fine, or is fine. I don't know. Ever, I'll give you a point if you can finish that sentence correctly that you've written down. <laughs> Both ketchup and mustard are fine. Okay, I'll give you a point, but this this is actually correct. Either ketchup or mustard is fine in a sausage it's sandwich. It's correct. Yeah, it's correct. Either requires a singular verb. 
Matt is correct. Oh. Yeah. Either is in fact singular, but it's a live. Yeah, colloquially, people do say "ah," oh. so it's it's one of those things. Like grammatically speaking, it's technically wrong, but colloquially, we we use both. Okay, next one, uh, Matt. I don't mind whether we go into another lockdown. I like working in my PJs anyway. Can't ask why Matt always gets to read them out as well. He's on the last three. He's just describing his own life. He's, he's at an advantage here because he gets to read it and then he hears himself saying it, which is easy. <laughs> uh, Chris, you read it, go on. Nah, okay. Do I you don't read... mind. Oh, sorry, Ashley. <laughs> I was just going to say, do you still read books out loud as well? <laughs> I, don't re I, don't, I don't read, mate. I don't mind whether we go into another lockdown. <laughs> I like working in my PJs anyway. Well done, Chris. We all believe you can read. Pajamas. Mm hmm. Pajamas. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it reads correct, but. Yeah, I think you could probably get away with it. Yeah, you'd say, I don't mind whether we go into another lockdown or not. Then if you're saying I don't mind, it needs to be a, a an either or, doesn't it? But yeah, technically, weather should have two, two different alternatives. So whether we go into a lockdown or not is correct. I don't mind going into... You're not wrong ever, but can you explain why you've corrected this sentence? Why is this one not right? I'll give you a point if you get it right. Uh, because uh, if you have weather, probably you need to have whether we go into the lockdown or not. That's it. Ever gets a point. So <laughs> weather needs to have two options. I don't mind whether we go into another lockdown or not. But in colloquial English, we make, we make this mistake all the time. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> this one this one's pretty pretty confusing. Okay, uh, yeah, Ashley. Uh, Harry Styles lives in a three bedroom bungalow with, without the W. Harry, uh, you really need to sort out bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Styles lives in a three bedroom bungalow whose living room faces out onto a bus stop. You've moved houses. Who has? Me. You because you don't live in a three-bedroom bungalow, so you've moved. I'm not Harry Styles. <laughs> oh, yeah, Harry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm actually quite sure how to change this, but I know that he's wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I was just thinking. I, I, I think I could see where the error is, but what is the... Correction? Could I, like, completely transform the sentence? Or do we need to just change one word, Harry? <laughs> what, Harry Styles lives in a three-bedroom terrace? <laughs> <laughs> so... So, Xenia is the only one to get this one right. Well done, Xenia. Yeah, I don't think I'm correct on this. I think I can see where the error is, but I don't think I'm correct in... Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I agree. I'm in the same boat. I think I've got the error, but I'm not quite 100% sure how to change it, so I've completely rewritten the sentence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matt, Matt, you're technically wrong for correcting it, because this is actually correct. <laughs> this is my quiz. Um... <laughs> 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 I'm the one giving out the points around here. Believe it or not, this one is correct. Whose is a relative pronoun of possession, and it can be used to talk about people, animals, or things. And a house is a thing, quite a big thing. But this always surprises people because whose always sounds like you're talking about something belonging to a person or, a, or an animal, not a thing. So, final question, number 15. Okay. okay. Whose round is it, geezers? I mean, it's terrible English, but... I'd question, it's probably yours, Harry. I don't think I ever see you buy one, so that's probably the answer. Whose round is it, bastards? I think it's your round, Manu. I mean, yeah, I'm not 100% sure on this. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Yeah. At yeah, go for it. I think way. Oh. Don't you think it was it? Correcto, correcto. And Another question mark. Is, so is, you're all wrong. You're hmm. all wrong. It is... Whose round is oh, it? Oh, I didn't think that. Mm. So whose with the apostrophe is who is. That's an abbreviation of who. Yeah. I saw that was wrong, but I didn't, yeah. I actually never spelt who's like that. Yeah. So ever you're right here. Uh, so is Manu. All right. So that's the quiz over. Let's count up the scores. Okay, so in joint fourth place, we have Chris and Xenia with three points. In third place, we have Matt with five points. In joint second place, we have Ashley, JJ and Eva with six points. 
And in first place, with an impressive eight points, we have Manu Roca Guardiola from España. Well done, Manu! Woo! Speech. <laughs> I'm so proud of beating your British friends. Fuck them. <laughs> That's the perfect way to end it. But what about on average though? What team won? Let's let's look at the teams. My students had an average of 5.7, while my friends had an average of 4.6. So that's it, my students won. Fuck them. <laughs> How did you do at home? Please tell me what score you got if you managed to beat Manu or if you were down the bottom with Chris. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you liked it and uh, see you again soon for another video. Fuck them. <laughs> That's where shit comes from. <laughs>